Okay, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Organizational Agility, Dare to be Agile uh, webinar. Um, I am very excited because some of the things I'm talking about today, I'm actually uh, working with, um, with a current client right now as we speak, last week and this week. Um, so one of the things that, uh, as we go into this, We have to at this point in our lives and with what's going on, I know it sounds melodramatic, but we have to be agile, otherwise we're going to die. We're gonna become extinct. And you're seeing this happen a lot, unfortunately, with um, you know, many businesses that um, haven't been able to adapt, you know, either for financial reasons or, or whatever, but they haven't been able to adapt. Uh, I do know like, you know, simple things like in my, um, where I live, that uh, restaurants are having to make uh, massive ad adaptations in order to stay in business, particularly family businesses um, around uh, Charlottesville and I'm sure wherever you live, because if they don't adapt their distribution, they, they'll go extinct, they'll have to close. And um, I know probably some of you are doing the same as, as we are supporting our local restaurants and um, areas that we know where family businesses are struggling. You know, some of us are being agile um, but we're barely surviving. So this is really about uh, becoming agile and thriving, really thriving. Oops, okay. So I'm Susan Robertson. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Lindsay's Conscious Business. You see uh, in the other pictures, Cynthia Medaglia and Andrea Haas are my business partners. We all have a mission around uh, helping others, particularly in business, but just helping others in general and helping uh, and making a difference in that way. Um, I am an author of two books, uh, Real Leadership, Wake into Wisdom, and Real Culture, The Catalyst for Conscious Business, and that will be coming out in September. And all of that is based on uh, working with teams and cultures and leaders over the year on helping them become more effective and more agile, even though, you know, in past years, we might not have called it agility. So who are we? Lindsay's actually means keen insights. And we, what we look at when we're working with clients is, you know, helping organizations have keen insights to reimagine, reinvent, and revolutionize to transform culture, to transform managers into leaders and leaders into executives, and to accelerate performance and business results. And I'm sharing, going to be sharing with you some of the things that we are actually doing with teams last week and this, this week. And again, we're, we are doing this live with some of our clients in order to be able um, for this organization to reimagine and reinvent themselves as we go through this new time in, in our lives. So the first thing I want to chat about is our, our mindsets. And what I'd like to, to put out there is that we are at a turning point. We are at a turning point in history. And if you don't mind, take out a pen, please, and a pad of paper. And I would like for you to write down uh, two things. One, the first thing is, it's, pretend it's December 2025. What do you think you'll be saying about the year 2020? And then the second thing is write down where you would like to be personally and professionally in 2025. So the first thing, what would you like to say about 2020 when you're looking back? And where would you like to be personally, professionally, your organization, if you're a leader inside of your organization? Because whether we realize it or not, we are business-wise, personally, our families, everything, we are at a massive turning point, or what I like to call when I'm doing leadership workshops, we are going through a significant emotional event, or we are all having life-defining moments. And how we adapt and whether or not we are agile and, and there are slight differences, but there are differences between being adaptable and being agile will determine the, what we say and how we think and how we feel five years from now. So again, writing down, writing down a challenge that you are facing right now, a challenge that if you could resolve, it would make your whole life easier, that it would allow you to breathe easier. 
So is it a personal challenge? Is it a professional challenge? Is it a leadership challenge that you are facing right now? So for example, uh, one of the challenges that the uh, teams that we are working with here in South Carolina brought up is that most people don't understand or don't know what's going to be happening with school opening. So it is a personal and professional challenge. What do, you, what do we need to do to support our employees as they go through the decision about what they're going to do with their children who are school age and who need to go through um, and they need to find child care and so on and so forth. So write down that challenge and then write down five decisions that you've made already about this challenge. So you've, you've got the challenge written down and what kind of decisions, thoughts, feelings, emotions, uh, to do's, I have to's, have, have you already made? So you've got your challenge, now write down the five. And we're gonna come back and revisit this challenge. And those decisions that you've made, it's gonna to be too hard, um, I really don't know what to do, I'm going to just stand still, I'm gonna wait and see. Um, you know, I had one of our clients here basically said he, he and his wife think they may have to adjust their lifestyle um, and that she might stay, um, take a sabbatical so that she can keep her kids at home. So what kind of decisions are you making about the challenges, the challenge that you are facing? So write that down. And as you're as you're writing that down, what I want to leave you with is a mantra you're going to hear me repeat. That any of those decisions that you are making today are going to be the building blocks of your tomorrow. So each of these decisions that you are making are probably helping you to adapt to the current situation. Um, and are you being agile so that, that you're putting in the foundation with your decisions that will take you toward tomorrow, that 2025. So you'll hear me repeat this. The, build, the decisions you make today are going to be the building are the building blocks of your tomorrow, no matter what the decisions are. So what we'll talk about today are these three mindsets, the turning point, whether it's adaptable or agile, or whether you're able to balance the challenges that you face and the decisions that you are making, and whether they are purely adaptable purely at adaptation or purely, you know, out in the future or whether you have a good balance. I'm going to share with you a toolkit that we are using in our team sessions to help create agility, to help you balance adaptability and agility and adapt your decision making. And then I, I call it a plus one. I'm going to talk about an exploratory conversation that we'd like to have with you if you would like to um, take us up on that particular offer. And it's an exploratory conversation into the challenges that you are facing. And then we're gonna ask you lots of questions around it. But again, I'll talk about that in a moment. So if you're a leader of an organization, one of the things that we keep getting asked, and Cindy and I are doing uh, some team sessions this week, is how do we improve performance? How do we improve performance given all of this, um, a lot of change and a lot of um, uh, you know, dynamic movement? And so what we like to say is that you need to have real leadership. You need your leaders to be resilient, engaged, agile, and oh my goodness, you need a lot of leading with wisdom right now. Most of us would love to have a crystal ball, but we don't have a crystal ball. And so, um, uh, you know, the, the idea of what can we do as leaders and focus, and we have to take care of ourselves. We've got to be resilient. We've got to drive that engagement. And leaders impact and drive culture and culture is how people work together and again we need resilient cultures and are we instilling these resilient cultures are we creating engaged cultures where people are inspired and involved are people being agile enough or are we trying to and i hate to say this folks you know there is no going back we have to be agile because there's only movement forward right and and we want to create loyalty because of the, the kinds of things that we go through. We want to keep our best staff right now um, in order to be able to perform effectively. And when you combine real leadership with real culture, you're going to get the kind of performance and results that you want and improve customer acquisition. This was, again, another one of the things that we're talking about with our clients this week is how do we change leadership behavior to create better culture so they increase their customer acquisition and retention of clients as well as then getting operational efficiencies and financial performance. 
you know, I think that for, for many leaders, that is one of the, um, that is one of the things that we're all trying to figure out, right? So what is organizational ag agility? It is our ability personally, professionally, and as an organization to adapt, renew, and strengthen. So organizational agility includes being adaptable. We have to renew ourselves, reinvent ourselves, and then we have to strengthen ourselves. Because of the renewal, we, we're going to be doing things that we're not used to doing. And so we have to strengthen our skills. And to do that, and this is where agility comes in, nimbly, quickly, while, and you see that in um, uh, bolded, setting the foundation for the future. Remember, the decisions you make today are the foundation of tomorrow. So now take a look at that challenge that you wrote down. And when you think about your ability to adapt, to renew and reinvent yourself, and what you're doing to strengthen new skills, and, we, and if you're a leader, when you think about how well is your organization adapting, um, how well are they, are you renewing yourself, reinventing yourself, and how well are you strengthening the skills and tooling your people um, and being nimble and, and, and adding that piece and setting the foundation of the future, will the decisions you're making today take you to where you want to go in 2025? So just something to think about. So this is uh, our first poll. We'd love to hear from you. And Cindy's going to be launching this poll. You know, one being low and uh, five being high. How agile do you think you are right now? Adaptable and agile. So go ahead and fill that in. Okay, I can see the results. We've got a few more people want, needing to vote. Okay, so Cindy, um, go ahead and show those results. And, you know, we just did this uh, last week, and we found that most people think that they're pretty agile. You know, 64% of this group think you're pretty agile. Some of you are maybe still holding on to um, uh, what you want, maybe going back to the past or, uh, or maybe having difficulty because, you know, change is difficult. But most of you feel like you're adapting fairly well. All right, so we can stop sharing that poll, and we can go into the next poll, Cindy, which is your organization. So on a scale of one to five, how adaptable is your team, if you're leading a team, your organization, how adaptable are they? Your company, your team. Is your team and your company adapting well? Maybe your team's your family. You know, many companies we're finding are, are, being, are good at uh, changing the process, but they may not always be as good at changing people's mindsets. So once again, so we have here um, you are now seeing the, the poll results. You can see that there's a difference, and this is interesting because this is we keep finding this pattern. I feel like, raise my hand, I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job at being agile and adaptable, but the folks around me um, need some more help. So if you're in that leadership role, whether you are um, a, a direct leader or just even an influential leader, we're going to give you some tools on um, potentially some things you can do to help others. So let's go ahead and stop sharing that. And so what we, we want to, to take you through now is what we call our DARE Agile methodology, and you'll be able to get a copy of this at the end of the, the workshop. It will also be on our, our website workshop. You can tell I've been in front of people for a while at the end of this webinar, um, our DARE Agile methodology. And it consists of four key things that you need to do. And I'm going to talk about each one of these things. You need to be able to define what adaptability and agility actually means. And remember, that includes the, the future, uh, um, what you're going to be creating for the future. And then you want to assess where you are. And then you want to be able to inspire people. Right now, so many people, uh, Cindy and I are working on um, 
a workshop right now on how to help people rebalance and renew themselves because people are so feeling so overwhelmed and tired. So how do you revitalize your organization and then how do you execute and measure that progress? So let's start with uh, define. So there's two aspects of agility to, to, to really think about. The first aspect of agility is the systems agility. The systems agility tends to be your strategy, your tactics, your process, your methodologies. Um, and many of us have had to, if you're leading a group, you've already had to make massive changes, even if it's just, just um, you know, working at the office to working from home. That's a massive change in the way you're doing things uh, systemically. And then there's the people side of change, the whole mindset. And that's one of the harder things to do is change mindset. You know, many of us want to go back to normal, but again, really, it's forward into the next normal. And we may never see, and that's why I keep saying to, to folks I'm talking with, this is a turning point. We may never see what we've seen back in February because things have changed and there's going to be permanent changes. And that's why you need to be able to adapt to the current circumstance but there's a lot of things when you're reading things like The Economist, um, you're going into Forbes, Harvard Business Review, they, you know, some of the warnings that they keep pre presenting in articles and blogs and all that is some of these changes are here to stay. There's not going to go back. Um, and so that's where you need agility is the ability to adapt, the, which is, you know, here and now, your current circumstance, the agility for the future, doing it quickly in alignment with where you're going to be in 2025, um, changing your systems and helping people change uh, my, uh, their mindsets in terms of what's yet to be. So one of the exercises that we do, and this is, I use stickies for this, is we, we talk about it as a paradigm shift. Paradigm shifts are fundamental shifts in belief system or structures or values or ways of working that businesses need to go through and we need to go through as people. And so I call this, it's a very simple, it's a very hard name, you'll need to write it down. I call this a from to exercise, from to. And what is it that, that's changing? And you know, I'm, I'm reading some of the stuff in the chat. If you have a question as I'm going along, please feel free to ask. Um, mindset. Uh, before our mindset is, you know, people are critical at the workspace in the office in order for us to have productivity. Now it is we're working from home. So I think the critical component is people working. You know, before we have to be in the office to have productivity. Now we know people can work from home and we'll have productivity. We were all, we were all moving toward open collaborative workspace. I was at a, an organization where they just opened everything up and it seemed like a big friends movie set or set or a Starbucks place where people could just be everywhere and you would have spontaneous meetings. And now it's virtual collaboration, asynchronistic. You can't just get up and walk around. You actually have to think about collaborating, getting on the phone, role clarification. Oh my goodness. We spend so much time role clarifying. Now it's just like, who, who's willing to take the lead? Who's got that skill? That from and that too. Walking around with relationship and connection. Now you have to be conscious and focusing in relationship building. One of the major things that we're actually seeing is, and we always get um, feedback on this in terms of culture stuff, is shoot the messenger. I bring up an idea, I bring up a problem, shoot the messenger. We're seeing a lot more grace for mistakes. A lot more uh, people saying, look, we don't know what we're doing. This is all new to us. You know, it's not going to be perfect the first time. And silos in terms of lines of business. And now we're looking at, we've got to have networks of people. So you can actually take virtually, or, you know, if you're doing socially distant team sessions, you know, what is our from and what's our to in terms of what we need to do, how we need to work, how we need to collaborate. And people can put that up there. And, you know, that we actually sometimes do a ceremony to say, we have to say goodbye to the past in order to um, create in our future. The second thing is, is that once you, you, you know where you want to go, what's your two, you've got to assess. You want to assess, this is your baseline for your from or your two. You can use things like SurveyMonkey, interviews, focus groups, things like that, you know, that says, okay, what are the things of the past um, or what's our current reality in terms of what's working for us or what's not working for us and where do we need to go? 
So SurveyMonkey and all of those tools, of course, we'd love for you to use our tool, but you need to be able to measure your current reality and your vision. Once you measure, get that assessment, you need to revitalize. And this is, uh, I know I went through that one fairly quickly because I want to spend a, a, a little bit more time on how do you revitalize. Assessment is easy. Defining is difficult. Assessing it is easy. Revitalizing, getting people involved and engaged and inspired, particularly right now when people are feeling overwhelmed, tired, and feeling threatened is a key piece. And so what you want to do, many of you have heard of the Agile methodology. This is actually the Agile methodology. And if you look at what you want to do is define the story. This is what they call it in Agile methodology. What's the story? What's the current story? So that's your from. And you have everybody write down, and this is a, a great sticky exercise, of, of where are we right now? What is our current reality? And then you, you want to um, identify that, too, and put, you know, put the two over there. This is where we want to head. And then in the middle, okay, so if this is where we want to head, this is our story, what do we need to do? And, th and you get everybody's ideas um, connected. And so we have, um, you probably won't be able to see it, but we have like eight by six stickies and black uh, um, uh, Sharpies so that everybody's writing in the same color. And especially with social distancing, we are able to see that from afar rather than gathering around a flip chart. And then we're able to move these things around. What else do we need to do? And nobody's idea is being, um, you know, shot because all the ideas are being put up there. Most of the time what we're finding is that wherever they're going to, they already have things in progress. So what's in progress? You know, maybe you need to do some research. And then as you move things along, what's great about these sticky exercises, and we save them for our clients, when things get done, we start to move the stickies over. So we call this, you know, the culture agile methodology. You know, that we're actually working on culture. We're actually working on team sessions or teamwork. We're actually working on collaboration so that the systems we put in place, the process improvements that we do, all of that um, becomes easier to work on. So then the last thing, and so then you have your real leadership, your real culture, your real results. And then the last thing that you want to do is execute. So the two that are the most difficult, believe it or not, is definition. What is your definition? Are you wanting transformation? Are you wanting tweaks? Is it systems? Is it people? Are you adapting? Are you being agile? What's the balance of all of that? Is actually executing because some people can do all of this stuff and then they let everyday life get to them and they don't take the time and then they forget to execute their plans. And if you don't execute, then that actually is a decision by default. And then you're purely adapting and you're not creating for your future. So as a leader, you need to make the time to actually do the implementation. And then you inspect what you expect. You measure that progress. And that's, you know, when you come back to this slide, that's where you're saying, this is what, what's been, uh, what we need to do and here's what we've done. And then you're able to reassess are we still heading in the right direction? So we have some gifts for you. We're getting close to the end of our time. As I talked about, this is a turning point. So as a leader, you really wanna start forward thinking versus just adapting. What's the turning point? What do you think is going to be here to stay? We have the Agile, the DARE Agile methodology, everything I talked about, a little bit more information there that you can use. You'll get that in the follow-up email. And of course, you'll have access to this webinar. It's being recorded. We have it on our website. We have it on our YouTube channel. Um, so we have one more gift that we'd like to give you. That is a 30-minute 30, 30 exploratory conversation. It is not a sales discussion. It's not us giving you coaching, although you'll probably have some of that. But what we'd like for, to hear from you is what is your challenge? And then we're going to ask you a zillion questions in 30 seconds to help you identify um, where in the Agile methodology you are and maybe some steps that you can take. Um, and then help you, uh, help you identify your next best step. So with that, I wanna leave you three questions. These are your thoughts for the day. Besides, remember your decisions for today are the foundation of tomorrow. 
So how balanced are your decisions between adapting to your current circumstances and balancing with tomorrow's destiny with agility? What is your from and your to personally, professionally, and as a leader? And then have you built a culture, you know, and if you're, if you're a leader of yourself, have you built an environment for yourself that supports agility, you know, and building, and building for that future? And again, always think about the decisions I'm making today, even if it's, I'm just not gonna make a decision, that is a decision, is building your foundation for tomorrow. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, we've got four minutes. Um, of course, here are all of our services that we offer. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to email us. But if you have any questions, happy to answer that. And, um, or any comments that you would like to make. If you would like, I should have said this, if you would like that 30 minute uh, exploratory conversation where you're putting that challenge, uh, just put me in the chat box and then we'll be sure to contact you to help you explore the DARE Agile methodology. The website address, yes, we can um, put that in there right now. It's very simple, lcbgroup.com. So I can actually put that in there. And if you would like that 30 minutes where we can talk about your challenge, we keep all of our com conversations confidential. Um, then we'd be happy to talk you talk you through the challenge that you're facing, whether that's for your business or whether that's personally. Okay, Kylie, we'll be sure to connect with you. Thank you so much. And with that, I hope everybody, me, Darlene, yeah, absolutely. Love to have you back, Darlene. Love chatting with you. Um, and thank you, Jack, for, okay. Very good. Have a great day, everyone. Happy Tuesday. If you're going through a heat wave, although I guess San Antonio is going through a cool spell, I hope you are uh, have the great rest of your week. Take care. Bye.